All right, guys. Today's video. I did the crank sensor a while ago, and I cleared that code. And now I'm just getting an O2 sensor code for Bank One Sensor Two, which is this one right here. And there's a Bank Two Sensor Two, which is over here. But Bank One Sensor Two. It's about your transmission cross member. So I've got both of them because I did the upstream mode two sensors when I did the exhaust up there because my converters were shot and uh, I had to modify the pipe for the four wheel drive with the lift kit. <clears throat> so we're gonna start now. I've had that O2 sensor out already. And I put some Teflon anti-seize whatever on it. So first you gotta grab your wire harness here. And this blue tab is supposed to be actually hooked to it inside, but I've already had it out a few months ago. So I just unplug it right like that. Set your wire harness over here. And it is a 7 8 French or 22 millimeter. And if you haven't had these out, you might need a little heat from a torch. Um, and pretty much, it's pretty easy. All you gotta do is get your wrench on there and crack it free. Or not crack it free. Because apparently, even when you have them off, they can still seize up in there. Which means I might be getting a little heat out here, anyways. This really shouldn't be that hard if I just had it out. <clears throat> there we go. And you want to kind of be careful though because you can strip out the threads. But just a little force and this one actually came free. Most of the time after that you can twist them right out. These days I'd like to do something out from under the truck because it's all oily under here. And this summer is really hot. One of the guys I follow on YouTube, he's an awesome guy. He's got a great channel if y'all don't follow him already. His channel is Vice Crip Garage and he is funny. And he was up in my area about mid-state doing the car revival okay so that's that's all your o2 sensor is and mine is a little white not sometimes they're black with carbon so i did clean this before i put it back in the last time so when you get your new one in there it has a little tube of anti-seize and it's always good to uh, put that on for ease of uh, ease of installing it, taking it out if you have to replace it again. Now, same with the crank sensor. When I did the crank sensor, I got AC Delco factory replacement because they you would think that being factory replacement, they'd be read to all good. You know, just like the factory. So, here's your little tube of the ASCs. And you just take your rubber band off the O2 sensor, wire harness, and there it is. The new ones are a little different shape, but uh, the plug's always the same. 
So we're gonna open this up. And spread a little bit of the antis on the threads and hope that it works somewhat better next time. So and this one is bank one sensor two. I'm really trying to get that check engine light to stay off. Because I actually pulled the light out of the dash cluster anyways, but I don't know. I check it periodically and it keeps throwing that code. So then you just reverse the process. Make sure your threads are not or your sensor's not crooked when you start it, or you're gonna cross thread the threads. <sighs> then you just screw it back in. If it screws back in now, come on now. I didn't do these rear row two sensors because when I did the exhaust modification because I didn't have the extra money to get them at the time and I did the upper ones because they're hard to get to one is way up by the starter and the other is way up by the oil filter so while I had the old Y pipe and new Y pipe out, it was a good time to change them. You now you just snug it up with your 7 8 wrench. Like that. And you find your wire harness. And the plug only goes in one way. So you plug your thing in and then if you want to stick your blue tab holder thing here to keep it in you can and then there's a tab thing here that just pushes into the frame just like that actually I think it's supposed to be under this shield yeah it's supposed to be under this protective shield it's supposed to protect it we'll see about that and there you go. There's the O2 sensor install for Bank 1 Sensor 2. Now Bank 2 Sensor 2 is kind of under this cross member here. And it's in the old factory piping. And I've never had it out. And maybe I should take that, but it might take too long. Because uh, I've never had it out, so I brought my uh, mini torch home from work today. In efforts, in case I needed a little bit of heat to get it loose. But I'm going to take a second here and grab the phone and show you guys. That's Bank 2 Sensor 2 right there. So, sorry about the light there. I actually charged my light this time. And I'll just turn it off for right now. So there's bank two, sensor two. I never touched it because the converters here, both converters and the entire piping is all brand new. But there's bank two, sensor one. And you can see how high it is up there. It's right there by the starter. And then I had to do this modification because the original Y pipe meets up with the drive shaft together when you drop everything for the lift because the whole front end gets dropped six inches to lift it. And then it puts the drive shaft right in the middle of the old pipe. And since both my converters were shot, I just, I found on eBay, you know, factory Walker factory stuff is like $500 for this setup here. And I found an aftermarket one that was uh, 250 or something like that, pretty cheap. And it was actually two separate pipes. The pipe coming over here met right here, and it just slid over there with a clamp, and then the two converters over here, 
and the downpipe for the right side were another pipe and they actually work out pretty good so I called up a buddy of mine and we went over to his shop and what we did over here is we cut measured and dropped the insert of two inches in here dropped it around so this is the the new pipe the original pipe we cut it extended it a couple inches and then he's got a bender and we bend it around and then back up over here and instead of clamping it we just welded it and then I was able to put my four-wheel drive shaft back in last fall so if you're doing a lift on a 89 to 98 GMC or Chevy K1500 that's what you got to look forward to you got to drop everything and change a bunch of stuff but you also have to if you don't know anybody with a shop you have to contact your exhaust shop and uh, make an appointment before you do the lift so that uh, when you're done with the lift and you get it aligned and they can just take it right over to the exhaust shop and they can do their modifications and uh, you can install your four wheel drive shaft because yeah O2 sensor bank one sensor one is up there right up there around the oil filter it's a little easier to get to than the one by the starter but that's why those two were new when I did the exhaust so today we're doing the back two because I figured you know I'm getting that code <laughs> For bank one sensor two, I might as well do bank two sensor two, do them both. So I'm not gonna film that one unless I run into a problem. Might make it interesting, but that's how you do the in O2 sensor swap. They're pretty easy in most cars, but some of them they put in the weirdest places. So if you got a truck of this year, at least you know how to do each sensor. Because they're all 7 eighths, the plugs are just plug in. And O2 sensor 2 is right there. The plug is right up in there, which is gonna kinda kinda suck, but it's alright. I'll get it. So till the next video, y'all have a good one.